Hello, good morning, I hope you're fine. This is a new week, so I wish you a very happy week, and I want to share with you three things that you can do this week to make your life a whole better. Our readings of today tell, talk to us about faith, and so I'd like to talk to you about three ingredients of faith. Three things that must happen if you actually want your faith to work. I mean, we all want our faith to work. We know that faith is evidence of things not seen, and that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yet, many people do not quite understand that we need to align these three ingredients of faith for our faith to work. The first one is prayer. Now, our gospel reading of this morning, which is taken from Matthew's gospel, from chapter 9, from verses 8 to 26, we read about an official who came forward to Jesus whose daughter had died. His daughter, listen, had died. In other words, there was nothing anyone else could have done about it. But because this man had faith, he dared to pray. He went to Jesus and said, My daughter has just died, but come, lay your hand on her and she will live. So the first thing we must take note of here is that if you believe, you must pray about it. If you're not praying about it, it means you don't believe it. You don't believe in God. You don't have confidence that God is going to be able to do it for you. So child of God, keep praying until something happens. You must keep pushing until something changes. That is one of the ingredients of faith. The second ingredient of faith that I want you to take very serious note of this morning is proclamation. Yeah, or some of us call this confession or profession. It's the same thing. You must proclaim what you pray about. In other words, you must speak in alignment with your prayer. If you are praying, for instance, to get well, and you constantly go about the whole day saying, I'm sick, I don't know what's happening, and you are confessing negativity meanwhile you're praying, you are creating a disalignment between your prayer and your confession or your profession. So I want you this morning to realign your profession and your prayer. Make sure that what you are telling God is what you are telling your friends. Because you believe that God is going to do it for you, then you must begin to confess it. You must begin to let it show in the way you speak. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. And let the sick say, I am well because of what the Lord has done. It's not because of what you are able to do or what the doctors are able to do. All right? It's because you have prayed and you have faith in God and you know what God is able to do. Now, of course, God will work through doctors sometimes and sometimes doctors are not able to heal us. Even when they cure our diseases, it is still God who heals us. Now, talking about doctors, in, our gospel, in this same gospel reading, we find a woman who had been sick for 12 years with an issue of blood. He had, she had gone to several doctors and nothing improved. In fact, the Bible says that things got worse. But today she had faith. And then she began to speak in alignment with her faith. You see that? So she came, comes, to Je comes to Jesus and says to herself, If only I could touch the help of his garment, I know I would be healed. Because she professed what she believed. She touched the helm of Jesus' garment and she became healed. If you are sick today, pray that your faith may move you in the way of Jesus and that you may be able to touch his heart and get your healing. Now, child of God, this woman got her healing because not only did she believe and prayed in her heart, she also prophesied, she also professed, she also proclaimed what she believed and what she prayed about. Now, the final thing I'd like to show to you, the final element of faith or the final ingredient of faith is practice. As you pray and proclaim, what are you putting in place? What are you practicing to ensure that your prayer and proclamation come to pass? Now, in our first reading of this morning, which is taken from Genesis chapter 28, from verses 10 to 22, we read about Jacob who slept and dreamt that some angels were going up to heaven and others were coming down. If you understand biblical symbolisms, you would very easily see that those angels represented, the ones going up, represent the prayers, the prayers and the proclamations of Jacob going up and the other ones that were coming down were the answers to those prayers that were coming down. So every time we pray or we make a positive profession of faith, what happens is that angels take that to heaven. Angels take our prayers to heaven. They take our professional our proclamations to heaven. Angels have no way of carrying negativity. That's why when you talk negativity, there's nothing going up to heaven. But when you prophesy, when you proclaim God's word, when you speak God's word over your situation, angels take them up to heaven and God sends them answers in return. But what I want to show to you here to end this reflection this morning is that as soon as Jacob woke up, he built an altar in that place. He put something in place. He established something. He began to 
practice the worship of the true God. Child of God, this is one area where some young people get it wrong. They have faith, they pray, they proclaim, but they don't put things in place. You must begin to put things in place in the direction of your prayers. Ten years ago, I, have, I had no word of French, but I wanted, to, I wanted to study in France. And what I did was I started buying French books. I was spending money buying books that made no sense at the time. But because I had prayed about it, because I had professed that I would speak this language and do my studies in that language, I began to put things in place in the direction of my prayers. But today, of course, those books, most of them are in French, and I read them in French. The reason is that I prayed about it, I prophesied it, and I put things in place in the direction of my dreams. Begin to put things in place, child of God, in the direction of your prayers today, and God will turn your life around. In the psalm of today, I want to pray with you to end with the psalm of today. The Bible says in Psalm 91, You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High and abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will rescue you from the snare of the fowler, from the destroying pestilence. With his pinions he will cover you, and under his wings you shall take refuge. The Almighty God bless you this week, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.